Welcome, Achievers, to your Easy Achievers Game Podcast for the week of March 8th, 2024. I am your kind of scraggly host for the day, Elijah, joined by no one, just you and me today, as we're going to be doing quite a light show uh, in terms of news, but I think we're going to actually go pretty in-depth with the news that we do have, because one, there's not much to talk about, but two, I think we can get very interested in what we're discussing, at least very in-depth in terms of where it went, where it's going to go. Of course, we'll be talking about what happened with Rooster Teeth. Um, we'll be talking about a couple of things that popped up, like Remedy and these things that went in the news. Respawn was in the news for some cancellations. Um, rumor Roundup, a little light. I grabbed some some random rumors we'll discuss. I always love going to the Reddit um, gaming uh, gaming rumors and leaks and all these things and going there and checking out what's there. So we're going to have a pretty lax show, I think. Uh, but I think we'll be going deep into said topics. But um, without further ado, let's begin. Not so rapid fire. Remedy has gained rights back from Control. Now, this was an official post on their website. I'm going to actually bring it up, and we can uh, delve into it. So this is from their official release. Today, Remedy Entertainment and 505 Games announced a transaction upon which all publishing, distribution, marketing, and other rights to Control, codename Condor, Control 2, and all future Control products will revert to remedy so you can read about it in full detail i don't think there's actually anything too too interesting you're gonna talk about the purchase price and the uh actual class flow effect i think is actually quite interesting the maximum purchase price for the transaction is approximately 17 million euro which equals to amount the the amount that 505 games have paid for the development of codename condor in control 2 to date including a minor premium Remedy is entitled to set off certain receivables from the purchase price, and therefore the clash flow effect from the transaction will be clearly less than the purchase price. Remedy will pay the net purchase price in three cash installments during the next 12 months. A little insider there, got a little deeper than I think you normally would with these types of things, but quite interesting that they made sure that they got control full rights. It makes sense, right? Because they clearly have this kind of intertwined narrative that they're working on, of course starting with Control, then going into Alan Wake and kind of interweaving them together. Uh, so you want the rights to all of that. And I believe they also have the rights to Alan Wake as well. Not I believe, they do. They bought it from Microsoft a long time ago. So not a long time ago. I think it was, what, six years, something like that now? Maybe maybe five, uh, roughly. Microsoft gave it to them for pennies, I believe, which is always strange, but I get it. Anyways. Cool. I don't have much to add. It just makes sense. You want to do this uh, pretty cheap, but it is a new IP and it didn't generate that much money. So uh, you'd have to argue, like, is it really valuable? And also 505 and Remedy, they probably still want to stay friends, right? So 505 was probably very nice on their way of the transactions. But again, as a reminder, I'm still new to value ship in terms of rights and all these things, especially with a new IP like that. So it's hard to some some like surmise like what's actually going on in the background. I'm only giving my rough estimates on what I think is happening. Respawn canceled their Star Wars FPS that we long talked about on the show. Um, they are still working on um, uh, a couple of things that we've been mentioning. I grabbed an IGN piece about this. Uh, if you remember, they were working on a Mandalorian game. We actually reported on this. Um, last few weeks ago, and we discussed it, meaning it made sense, right? The, there was a Star Wars Mandalorian game. It was going to be an FPS, specifically the Mandalorians, not, of course, the show Mandalorian. Uh, and that looks like it is going to be canceled. EA actually made sure to preface that they're canceling it, and they're going to focus more on their own products. You can read about more of this on uh, any site that you prefer. I don't think there's too much uh, else in there other than EA wants to focus on their own things. It makes sense, right? We talked about the premiums that costs that uh, these companies are having to pay as part of the um, premium of making the game itself, right? Uh, we look at the Insomniac lease, look at the Spider-Man, look how much they have to pay Marvel just, just to make the game. Marvel does nothing, absolutely nothing, other than controlling the rights, which, of course, is the most important part of that transaction. And they make so much money, making hundreds of millions of dollars off these Spider-Man games. And the same situation with this, and EA uh, 
rightfully, I guess, from a business point of view, is asking themselves, why are we losing all this money? Let's focus on our own IP and work from there. And hey, it gets, and this was, of course, amidst uh, some layoffs and a giant shakeup in quotes. I don't know how much of a shakeup it will be. We'll have to see how big of a shakeup it will be, but that is all we have. Everything else has been untouched, though. The Marvel game, the Black Panther one, and the, um, Oh, actually, let me click back onto here. What was it? Black Panther and Iron Man. Uh, Iron Man, I believe, is at Motive. Black Panther is... God, where is Black Panther? Let's find it together. Give me some time to find that Black Panther EA game. Let's find out who's making that over at EA. Cliffhanger? Yes, Cliffhanger. That's right. There you go. Boom. Single player. Black Panther game. We'll see if that's going to be any good. Very excited. A game that recently got into my eye, Unicorn Overload reviews are now out, as well as Final Fantasy VII um, Rebirth is also out. You can go check the reviews on the Unicorn Overload. Definitely something I'm going to be keeping my eye on. I think I'm going to be buying this game relatively soon uh, once I'm done with Rebirth and a few other games in my back catalog. I finished Persona 3 re- uh, Reloaded, and uh, once I f- clear out some of the other games, I think I'm actually going to check this out. This looks great. I want to try the demo. I heard there was translation issues and all these um, things with this game uh, that you can uh, read about. I have not delved too deep into it, so I'll, I'll have to actually read it to to uh, to discuss it in, in full. But from what I understand game looks great i found it randomly on like a youtube trailer when i was just going through youtube saw it and was like hey let's look at this trailer and it looks great i can't wait to give it a shot the demo is transferable so you can't play the demo and then transfer your content from that so i probably will do that before i buy it just to make sure i want it uh and i'm excited Uh, i'll talk about final fantasy rebirth in a second when we get to what have you been playing of course Spider-Man 2 free update came out, uh, I believe it was yesterday as a recording, Thursday or Wednesday, I can't really remember now, I think it was yesterday though. Um, New Game Plus out, of course, uh, a bunch of new suits, the ability to change your symbiote tendrils and all these things, but the reason we're discussing it on this show uh, is very funny, I think they already fixed it or are in the uh, mix of fixing it right now, but the new DLC did unlock the debug dev menu for the game. Uh, don't know how that happened, but it did. Very funny. Uh, so you could very much crack open the game uh, by hitting the touchpad and start at the same time and uh, just have at it. I mean, it's obviously dev talk, right? So you would have to have some understanding of what things mean. I saw the menu for a few seconds, so you would have to kind of piece together what each command would do. But there it is. It was right in front of everyone's face. It's kind of fun. I always like these things where you kind of do get to see behind the curtain on the game and see what's going on in the background hopefully they have that fixed soon uh they did caution people from trying it because it might corrupt their save i'm assuming they say might because like we don't know what will happen so if it does that's not our problem so there you go fallout designs have hit the custom controllers on xbox design labs this of course coincides with the show launching on prime video very soon trailer is out for the show right now uh, that I think the, I think it's like the March twentieth or something for the Fallout show. Let's find out. Fallout show release date. So let's see that April twelfth. So uh, not not this month, next month. Um, I'm excited for it. I did not watch the trailer. My wife is a very big Fallout fan. Uh, so I, I'll give it a shot. But I'm not really sure if it's going to be very good. Just a few things I've seen with the screenshots. I'm like, mm, that isn't going to great. And also, um, I feel like there's not like a lot of steam behind it. You know what I mean? Like, maybe I'm not saying it correctly, but it doesn't feel like it's really getting any attention. I mean, maybe I'm crazy or, you know, it, it doesn't feel like The Last of Us. And I guess that's not fair to really compare the two. But when I compare the two... It just doesn't really feel like it's going to make an impact, but I hope I'm wrong because I I do am, or I am, sorry, a major fan of Fallout. So we'll have to see if it's going to be any good. April 12th. I'm excited. And it's all at once. So it's a bingeable show, which is like, "Mm, wouldn't you want to do it week week by week if you like thought it was going to be any good? But again, we'll have to find out. Let's see here. Uh, Baldur's Gate 3 is a fun one. Uh, Baldur's Gate 3 will be on four discs when it launches physically on March 25th on Xbox. Uh, PS4, or sorry, PS5 will be three discs, I believe. 
the Xbox uses a smaller uh, storage disc. So that is why it is on the Xbox version and not the PlayStation version. I believe the PlayStation version will be three disc. Xbox will be four, I, I imagine. Um, I actually don't know. For sure, it actually might be two discs. I might be wrong about that. But regardless, the reason is uh, Xbox uses a smaller uh, data disc than PlayStation does. Marty O'Donnell, legendary former composer from Bungie, has announced that he will be getting into politics. Just a f- random for fun thing. You can go check out his policies and all these things. Um, he He's going to be the House of Representatives in his state, I believe. I can't remember where he lives, but I just thought I'd bring it to your attention. It's hilarious. Some people view him as the best composer ever in gaming, right? So definitely an important figure in the industry. And interesting that he's getting into politics, but there you go. Moving on. That's not so rapid fire. Let's get into what have you been playing. Now, I have been playing. Oh, of course, what have you been playing is a question for me and also you at home. What have you been playing? Let me know in the comments. Tweet at me at you on a thousand. Let me know what you've been playing. Let's have a discussion. We can have full discussion on what we've been playing, what we're enjoying right now. And I have to be honest, I've really only been playing Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, some light hell divers for uh, for the little event that they had very uh, recently, but I'll get into that later. But Final Fantasy Rebirth, Persona 3 Reloads, the last time I, I discussed with y'all, and Final Fantasy Rebirth, it has really gotten me. Now, I did replay Remake, had a blast. I mean, I really did have a blast. I did forget how good the game was. I have to be honest. I think I talked about this prior, but I did. I don't know. I I must say I respected Remake. It was a good game, but at no point did I go, oh, this is a great title. The, you know, I, I really didn't, don't think I gave it a fair shake the first time. I beat the game the first time. I played uh, everything in it. You know, I did like as much as I could, all the side quests um, and all the things and I don't know. I, I feel like I remembered it not being as good or something. It's it's a strange thing to try and tell someone what I'm what I'm conveying here. But I really do mean like I remember playing the game and just n- not in, in like in revisiting it being like, wow, I really felt like I wasn't maybe fair or didn't give it the flowers it deserves because the game is fantastic. It really is the 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 combat system, the way you can uh, go back and forth from your other characters, the way you can use materia and upgrade all of these things, the proficiency system with, with how weapons and it encourages you to use weapons. I think the upgrade path is actually one of the flaws in that game. And it's actually fixed in this one. I think is way more interesting the way they do it in rebirth. And I am enjoying my time with her quite a bit. I am, I won't spoil the game because I know uh, people are playing Rebirth or Remake and Rebirth for the first time. Didn't play the original game. I did play the original game um, around the time I played Rebirth. No, sorry, Remake. So I won't spoil it here, but I will say I'm I'm liking the differences. It's fun being like, oh, that you know, I I know that that, and I oh, I realized that and that. And this is there is a unique situation with these two games. I guess I shouldn't say, although I feel like it's obvious um, from if you've played Remake, um, but they seem to be complementing each other in ways pretty much no other game really has done, especially a remake of a game. So I definitely think everyone should give Remake a shot. If you like it, get into Rebirth, because Rebirth is very special, I think. I think Rebirth is going to be great. I'll be curious to see how the story ends. Uh, one thing I feel like I haven't seen a lot of people compliment on, and this is why I feel like I should give uh, kind of my thoughts on this, because I feel like I'm saying something unique here is I don't really feel like anyone's talking about the writing in this game. You know, I, I hear the combat. I hear uh, how good the equipment system is, the material system, et cetera, et cetera, right? The writing, I think, is actually very good. And it's not like a one-for-one remake in terms of writing at all. Of course, that wouldn't make any sense if you did that. And with the way they're talking and going back and forth and, and the kind of chemistry all the characters are having is very natural and actually pretty funny. I'm finding that, like, you know, they'll crack a joke and I am actually audibly laughing or I'm having a good time or I'm feeling the chemistry between characters. And I really do like that. I very much enjoy the writing in this. I think that's actually an unsung part of the game. I feel like no one really talks about how well it's written. The actual words that all the characters are saying and the dialogue between each other. It really does feel like they are kind of friends on this journey together. 
And I enjoy that a lot. I think that was the best part of actually Final Fantasy 15 specifically. Um, especially in that specific game that was kind of encountering a situation that was very unique. I think Gears of War did a very similar thing that that, that game did as well. Uh, Final Fantasy 16 also very good with writing. Although the narrative, I, in my opinion, left a little bit too... Uh, left left me wanting. But in this specifically, I'm about, I would guess, 60 to 70% through the game. I'm in chapter 9 out of, I believe, 13 chapters. I have done every single thing I possibly can up until the point I am right now, pretty much, other than finishing this chapter 9. I think I have two, one thing left, and then I can move on with the game. I am very, very thoroughly playing this game, right? I'm, I'm kind of treating it like my head cannons, like, oh, you know, they're, they're in this region, and then they spend all their time doing all these little activities as they're making their way through the areas, right? So to me, I'm like, well, they, you know, it makes sense if they did everything and they didn't come back to this region. So that's how I'm kind of treating the game. I actually had my hardest encounter yet because... So far, the game's been not easy, I would say. I have it actually on dynamic difficulty. I'd be curious to see how different it would be if I played on normal, if I would actually even notice the difference. I My characters are dying, and I do feel like things are hitting me pretty hard. So uh, I do f think it's working well, although I am not having like much trouble. But I did have a challenge in the little VR component of the game. Not literal VR, but in the game there is a VR component that are like challenges. I did one of these challenges and it was pretty much like you have to keep, you have to kill an enemy. Uh, I won't spoil what it is because it's kind of cool that it's in the game. You have to kill one enemy um, and there's two other enemies around it that will kill themselves like in a self-destruct way to hurt you. So you have to kill the middle enemy while, while keeping these other two like, either asleep or at a distance or you stop, you know, there's a bunch of different ways you could do it. That was actually very challenging. I feel like I actually had to look up a guide because I was like, what am I supposed to be doing with this? It doesn't really make sense. And then I looked it up and I was like, oh, okay, okay. And, and that helped me a lot. I was able to eventually do it, but that was very tough. I'll be very curious to see if that is like the stopper for a lot of people for either getting the platinum or going towards uh, doing everything in the game. Cause that was quite, quite rough, quite rough. I would have to say. I'll be, uh, I saw a lot of people when I was looking up strategies and things like, I just bump it to easy. No one's going to care. Uh, and I was like, eh, I don't really want to do that. I didn't do that. I really did want to figure out how to do it. And I did. I was able to do it. I found a guide. I didn't copy exactly what they did. I did like 80% of it and put my own spin on it the way I like to do things in that game. And I'm just enjoying it. The new mechanics that they added with Synergy System and... Uh, the way level ups work is literally the sphere good from Final Fantasy X. There is so many things about this game that I'm mean, really enjoying. I can't recommend it enough. I think it's well worth $70. Well worth $70. And I think I'll end it at that. I think I've talked about everything I wanted to about the game. Uh, definitely play Remake before playing Rebirth. I saw that they were trying to talk people into buying this without playing Remake. Please do not. Uh, it does not make any sense. They are lying when they say you don't have to play a remake. They want you to buy this game because uh, they don't care once you buy the game, you know, if you play it or not. So please play remake. Try out Rebirth. I'm not the, one of the guys that say you have to play Final Fantasy VII, although you're missing a lot. Um, I wish they would have been more clear when they re made remake that you should really play Final Fantasy VII. Um, because when I played remake, I was expecting a remake and not you know, et cetera, et cetera. And I understand it's playing on words, blah, blah, blah. I've said, I've said what I want to, let's move on. Persona 3 Reload is the second game I want to discuss, actually. Uh, Persona 3 Reload, um, finished, got the thousand. I did, I did use a guide. I used like a, one of the like day guides where it's like, you know, hang out with this person this time, this, this, this time. Cause I really wanted to make sure I got the thousand, uh, for this game. And I gotta admit, I probably will never do that again for a Persona game. Uh, because after a while, it does get a little annoying uh, if, after like, oh, let me make sure I do this and this and this. But but I must be honest, with Persona 4 and 5, I don't mind replaying them. Persona 3, I was like, mm, I might not like this one. So uh, that's why I was like, let me do everything in the first playthrough. And if I ever play it again, I won't have to worry about anything. And I am a kind of happy I did that because I don't think I'm going to want to replay this ever again. Although the game is, I would say, very good. I do like Persona 5 and 4 more. I know a lot of people uh, actually love Persona 3, and I do like it a lot. 
it's just not close to four and five to me although the narrative i think is actually very very good i think the game is just a little too slow that first two months i would say in the game once you pass the first reveal i won't i don't, I don't want to spoil things but like once you figure out what C's is, I guess I, I guess I'll, is what I'll say. Figuring out what C's was, getting the classic Persona twist. You know, again, no spoilers here, but if you play the game, you know what I mean. The the Persona twist, they you know all of them have twists. This twist was just like, yeah, I kind of, kind of figured that. You know, I think the ending is actually beautiful. It's one of the games where I would actually recommend if you have any passing interest in Persona you would definitely need to play this and you do have to if if you find it going so sorry i think it's actually worth pushing yourself because once you pass the hump it is very good the narrative does pick up the dialogue gets much better um the cadence of how you're playing the game is much better and then the ending i think is great i think the ending is great and i wasn't expecting it i thought i definitely thought one thing was going to happen and it didn't and i commend the game it's it's actually surprisingly um i, I guess saying that would sub spoiled game so i won't say that but it was surprising i would say the, the, the game because you think i assumed it would go one way and it didn't and i have to commend atlas for doing that because it's like oh wow that took um i guess guts to kind of do certain things that they do in the game and i enjoy it i enjoyed it quite a bit recommend persona 3 reload if you have xbox game pass of course you could play the game we'll be talking about the expansion pass at the end of this or sorry at the beginning of the show and uh, that's, I think, what I want to talk about, what I've been playing. Helldivers, of course, Helldiving. Uh, I did go back to Destiny for the new event. Uh, I don't want to bore you guys with that. It's Destiny, you know. So let's move on. Rumor Roundup. I have a couple things where we're going to rapid fire through. Uh, so I saw on Insider Gaming, we had a Ghost Recon project is up so this is the next mainline ghost recon this is insider gaming tom henderson this literally just went live so i couldn't do a quick write-up so of course go give them a read because i'm not gonna be reading everything i'm just gonna be reading a little bit but you have to go give them the click to read everything but pretty much not much currently known about the next mainline game ghost recon game apart from it being in development under the project name over previously insider game reported that the game would be set during a, the fictional naaman war uh, speaking with the sources under the condition of uh, anonymity, because there were not authorized to talk about the game yet, and Sarah Gaming has a scoop. Currently, the next Ghost Recon title is aimed to be released in 25, 2026, which will see the Ghost Recon sorry Ghost Recon franchise head back into a first-person perspective. This game is poised to be a squad-based military tactical shooter, shocking, almost milson like in nature, uh, mil almost mil sim like in nature. So, of course, military simulator like in nature. That will also take inspiration from some of the leading first-person military games, including Modern Warfare series, Battlefield, um, and etc. And I will leave the rest. Apparently, it's going to be set in a hostile southeastern country that has set, seen hundreds of thousands of people die as a result of war crimes. It's understood that the plot of the game evolves around the ghosts, your team infiltrating the war zone to carry out secret missions, and to locate a traitor. So some light details, honestly, like if if I feel like if you ask someone to guess what the next Ghost Recon game would be about, uh, it'd be that, <laughs> you know, like it'd be pretty close to that. It's pretty, pretty, you know, sounds like Ghost Recon. Cool. Uh, I'll, I'll be excited to see it. I do enjoy the Ghost Recon games, although I did not enjoy um, the last two ones that much what was it ghost recon wildlands and breakpoint i think is what they were called something like that uh did not love them i enjoyed um was it advanced advanced warfire for 360 i want to say uh was was a good one and then uh, what was the one where where you could like sync up your shots oh was that warfighter as well that one as well go I, I don't remember what it's called but that that one for i think that was also for 360 um, that one was fun too, where you like, oh, you know, shoot that gas tank, blow it up. I'll shoot this guy, and you you could use all your NPC people to shoot guys. It was very fun. Uh, this is another one. Uh, looks like the Adult Swim titles will be delisted by May. This is a actually an Ars Technia one. 
uh, I, I, go check this out. It has a full list of the games. They're they're very long, but it looks like Warner Brothers does not want to let go of a lot of these rights, so they're just going to be straight up pulling a lot of these games. So go look at go look this up if you uh, want to grab it in these games. Uh, a developer actually made one of their games free before it's going to be taken out. It is developer small radios, big televisions. Oh, yeah, yeah. So the game, Small Radio's Big Television, is now free in response to this. So go check that out if any of that sounds interesting. And then I found, I wanted to bring this to attention, but it seemed like one of the inside, insider in quotes kind of things where I think this is a verifiable insider that as in they have things that are true, but this kind of made the rounds that Sony is working on multiple remakes and remasters. This is via Silk Knight on, on Twitter slash X. Uh, and it, it's such a like in my opinion kind of a generic thing um that it it doesn't have any weight for me in a rumor uh if you would have asked me is sony working on multiple remakes and remasters i would have said yes of course they are um it's a, it, 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 and also what constitutes as a remake or remaster is it being ported to pc counted as well so it's just very like vague and just like oh you know it's multiple remakes and master oh and also 2025 is shaping up to be a significant year for the brand is is a part of the post and it's like okay it's cool uh, i'm sure it is uh we know a lot of things that are going to be happening in 2025 so i saw this circulating i just didn't feel like it's really saying anything it just kind of feels like this insider said something that isn't really verifiably untrue and probably is true in the moment, but you've not given me anything concrete to go on. And I do kind of get upset when, when rumors like that, again, rumors and quotes get like kind of spread like that. Cause it's like, you know, yeah, yeah. Okay. Of course it did. Of course, of course they're working on remakes and remasters at some of these studios. Um, they've ported last of us like twice. Uh, each game like two two times already something like that so i i have to i have to kind of roll my eyes a little bit on that unfortunately uh again i, I hate when the big big uh publishing arms are reposting these things it's like come on what what's what's going on with this let's start the show for the week now we'd say we, i open the show with it i do want to talk about rooster teeth to begin with uh, this we have talked about Rooster Teeth before in here. They kind of went into obscurity. I would say bef- um, uh, they were obscure. I think before the show even started, uh, this show specifically. I have to be honest. Not trying to be a dick here, but w- and I, I'm I'm trying to mean and obscurity isn't the right word. I would say not as big as they were, or I, I guess had the weight because. It was one of those things where I, every time I heard someone say they watch Rooster Teeth, it's usually in the past tense. So I can't say I was shocked about a lot of this. And also, there were quite a bit of unsavory things coming out about that that specific company that just gave me a little bit of disdain for them. There's a um, quite actually a pretty popular video about on this channel uh, in context of how small I am. Uh, if you go to, I mean, I think, I think I've made it rooster teeth is on fire or something like that, or, or, or something, something along the, the nature. Uh, it's a horrible thumbnail of like their logo just on fire. Uh, and it, you know, it's a decent for the time. And I remember covering that story and it was like how bad practices they had and how employees had issues in these things. And it's like, yeah, yeah. I mean, if you see how they act on camera, you know, you can imagine, that there would be problems behind the scenes just because, like, yeah, they seem, you know, they all seem kind of childish. They all kind of seemed over their head. Uh, so I actually didn't know something. Uh, this Variety article is actually, like, super interesting. So I didn't know they were sold twice, technically. Um, so uh, going over to the Variety, again, uh, everyone should actually go read this, like, in depth. It's quite interesting to, to read about this. So the closure actually results in the layoff of about 150 full-time members and will throw about a dozen contractors, content creators out, you know, people with contracting gigs and these things. Uh, you can, I'm not I'm skipping things like memos and these things. Uh, they are looking to sell rights to certain things, uh, things like Ruby, Red vs. Blue, and Genlock. Um, Warner Bros. stuff agree is specifically trying to sell them off. I don't know how fruitful that will be and how much they're looking for any of that. Because if they're closing all these studios down, you imagine they probably don't care about these rights and they're probably just looking to make some money back. 
I can't imagine any of that's worth quite a bit of money, but you have to see. Uh, maybe Ruby probably being the most. Uh, and it's also looking to sell the Roost Podcast Network, which I believe is literally every show that they do, I I think, that like has a brand name i think is every every show that they do that talks on a mic i think is 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 the as that podcast network so once you sell that off you know it's, it's gone uh they own all all the shows um uh let's see here it's, uh, they just celebrated 20 years and i think it's 21 years now uh i'm trying to find what i wanted to discuss yeah so rusty found in two, uh, 2003 by bernie burns matt Hollum. Jeff Ramsey, Jason Saldana, Gus Sorillo, and Joe Heyman. So, uh, just as a, a front, they, they, they first sold in, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. Uh, blah, blah, blah. It, it, so, back in 2014, Rissa was bought by Full Screen, which in turn was bought by Otter Media, which was a joint venture of AT&T and the Churning Group. Before Rooster Teeth became a part of Warner Media under AT&T's ownership in, two, in 2022, Discovery closed the acquisition of Warner Media to form Warner Brothers Discovery. Just as a quick summarization, this is from Variety. So they originally bought by full screen, right? Back in 2014. And that gave them like the rights that alone made all the founders incredibly rich, right? So they pretty much did that. Then, then full screen sells to Otter Media, which then is into the giant branch of Warner Bros. Discovery. And apparently, they so Rooster Teeth had operated a subscription video on demand service from its earlier days, and in 2016 rebranded the service as First. I remember all this very. This was when, when I was really into YouTube. Um, in this time, I remember seeing Rooster Teeth First all over the place. I didn't really watch their content a lot. I liked, um, Always Open, which was hosted by Barbara Dunkelman. I think I'm nailing that. I liked that show quite a bit. That was fun. And then I didn't watch a lot of Red versus Blue stuff, but I watched a lot of the early stuff when they were really starting out. I enjoyed it quite a bit. I didn't, but I didn't watch a lot of it. I think that's all. This. Oh, and I watched early Achievement Hunter stuff. Like I would like when they were literally Achievement Hunting. Like you know, I watched that stuff uh, when they were still doing that. And then I watched their Halo clip series from like whenever that was. I don't I don't even remember when that show was a thing, but I I liked when they were doing the Halo clips. They did like hundreds of them, I think. I loved that show where they would the people would send them Halo 3 and Halo Reach clips and they would watch them in the com commentary. I don't even remember who did that. I think it was random people like Jeff Ramsey and just people on the network would come in and just talk about it and make fun of stuff. And it was funny. I but that's really all my history with Rooster Teeth. Not the biggest fan. I actually I don't like isn't is a strong word. I they, a lot of their people rubbed me the wrong way. If I'm being honest, like a, some of the people that I worked on there won't name them because, you know, that's very rude. But, yeah, I kind of had a, a, a gist of like, OK, you guys don't you guys seem kind of mean. Some of them. And it just wasn't my vibe of stuff. And of course, I, in, in my opinion, I, I kind of grew out of them being on, you know, I, I have to say, like in their early stuff it just it, they're not i guess i should say they're not my type of humor maybe is maybe what i mean I'm, I'm not really not really trying to like demean anyone for watching their stuff i think they probably do good content it's just i felt like i kind of moved on to like i didn't watch gaming stuff for fun i watched it to learn i guess is a better way of putting it like i wanted to learn about gaming stuff watching them is you know you kind of it's kind of like junk food sort of you know um or no, 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 you know, a better way of putting it is like you're watching a comedy show. That's what that's what they are. They were. And I wanted to watch informative video game content. And, you know, the, I I bounced from them, eventually uh, went to like kind of funny and all these things and eventually jumped from kind of funny and actually listened to Sacred Simples because I like learning and, and like getting in depth with the gaming things. Not really interested in the comedy junk food aspects that kind of funny is kind of turned into although i still watch their stuff of course too kind of funny having that rooster teeth connection i think they left them before this and i'm sure they knew about about this a, a bit um because i'm sure high 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 point uh or they heard rumblings or these things um i'll be curious if they did actually know um i'd love to <laughs> poke around and see if anyone 
knew or if any of the founders got wind because you imagine someone knew right or some some of these bigger people knew i saw uh i th- don't think kind of funny is even associated with them anymore but um from the outside they just seemed unwise with money when hearing they were in like airplane hangers and these things like giant shot i mean i was talking giant places like giant stadiums and these not stadiums like um i remember greg miller I think said he visited it and it's literally an airplane hangar or old airplane hangars. And you have to, I mean, imagine how much that costs. And I think they did another one and it's like just giant places. And I feel like they were close to making something work, but I just, I heard uh, in, in this piece, actually, they say they have not been profitable uh, in years. Uh, Let's see, see if we can find it that's discussing their 2022 stuff and we discussed all that uh yeah this article says it somewhere i'm I'm, i lost it now but they they weren't making any money for pretty much since i believe 2014 when they were bought by full screen or it might have been bought by otter me or when otter media bought bought full screen it's probably when that happened so they weren't making any any money, which is pretty fucking crazy uh, for a long time. And they had like a lot of paying subscribers and these things. And they were making I mean, they were making money uh, and they hired a bunch of people. So like it seems like they were good at getting people on board very quickly and having a lot of people. I mean, they, they had 150 something people. That's a lot of money. And having these giant places to work at. It just seems so unwise on the outside. And, oh, there you go. I'm not trying to pretend like I'm some soothsayer or anything. You know, and I'm not trying to be like, oh, I'm smarter than these people. I'm sure there is an avenue of success that they just did not know how to do. And you have to argue the money part is the most important. I mean, I can't imagine how much money they're making. They're probably burning it, just burning it uh, from the other end. Which, you know, the founders probably don't give two shits. They already made their money. Uh, but maybe, you know, maybe they do. I saw that they made a video. I'm not trying to attack anyone personally, by the way. I feel like I'm being mean here. I apologize. I'm just trying to, t- I, I, I'm speaking thoroughly, I guess I should point. Like, I'm, you know, but speaking from the founder point of view, I saw the, the videos surfacing that they had, they had like a giant, kind of like goodbye party i guess you could say or something i think the video was taken down so they probably did that you know without warner brothers knowledge which is wise and they would have said no but you know the uh, jeff ramsey and i think bernie burns hugged and stuff and i'm like yeah i mean they're gonna be fine so i'm not really i don't really care about any of the founders if they were any close to smart they're still very rich um i i feel bad for the everyman that you know probably grew up with rooster teeth or grew up with receiving their lives and now they're destined you know not destitute that's i think exaggerous and inflammatory they're they're wounded from this very heavily and that's that's sad to see because uh it was obvious it wasn't run very well um from their 2022 giant thing that you know i covered before with how crazy they were with to each other let alone with money and these things so they had they've had troubles and it's been obvious i think just because like how big they grew and they just couldn't handle it. And they and they look like they wanted to, this podcast company wanted to eventually become this kind of production studio that did podcasting and and art and animation and all these things. And it looks like Ruby was close to kind of blowing up and maybe saving the company. Because I feel like I see that everywhere. Like people talking about Ruby and you see the merch and the, the, the pops and the plushes and all these things. So maybe that was close to saving them, but clearly Warner Brothers does not care. They'll probably sell these IPs for probably dirt cheap. I imagine they don't care about any of these IPs, so they'll probably sell them for cheap. Maybe one of the founders will buy them and just restart it all up. I don't know, but uh, we'll see if they actually care about the company because if those founders pull together, they could probably grab some of these IPs. Uh, But who knows? I think that, I think that's all I wanted to say about this. Again, I am I am speaking more of an outsider, so I don't want to pretend like I know a lot of people there personally or anything, or I watched any of their content. Uh, I watched a little bit very very long ago, um, and I technically know them through my 
viewing of the kind of funny content specifically because they were in the let's play family which never made sense to me but i think all they did was sell merch and like ads so unsure but there you go Bruce's Eve is gone. Very sad for everyone involved. I hope everyone lands on their feet. I believe they were Texas bound or Texas um, centered. So uh, hopefully gainful employment will be found from them. Let's move on to the Xbox partner showcase. Uh, this is of course uh, something that happened where see kind of like a Nintendo direct sort of kind of thing. You, you know how they do the partner directs. If you're more of a Nintendo fan, mini state of play if you're a playstation fan so this is just a partner showcase where they just threw up there kind of nonchalantly to been like hey you know here's a bunch of games coming to the xbox platform very soon some of these being announcements um i think it was actually very good i'll save my thoughts and go straight into the news first though uh unknown nine awakening is what uh, started the show this is coming summer 2024 uh there's actually a very interesting games industry biz article that i found that everyone should go check out so uh, something you've heard probably a thousand times. So the Reflector Entertainment CEO and the Bandai Nemco executive. Oh my God. Herve Hordet? Hort? Was interviewed on here. And they discussed how they want uh, Unknown 9 to be this transmedia universe with, they already have like a comic book, I believe, and a novel. And now this game will now complement those two things and they pretty much have like a hundred years span strategy that they want to tell stories in, in comics, books, I assume, games, movies, TVs, etc. You should check out this interview. It's actually interesting. Um, very, I guess I would say ambitious. We'll have to see, you know, how many times do you hear these things like, oh, you know, we want to be in everything and make a lot of money in a bunch of places. Uh, they even say here, it's like, you know, we don't think this has been done before. I'm like, eh, you know comic books you know with a lot of things have done stuff like this before so well i'll have to see if this actually becomes something i you know it's hard to guess the trailer looked good but you know we don't have much to go on but go check it out transmedia strategy you'll hear from the ceo and then the bandai namco executive on what their plans are for this um ip i am i am skeptical but you know, they're just starting. Slide a hand with a CGI trailer. This got my wife very excited. I was watching it with my wife. She was very interested in this. And I am too. It looks like you're using cars in this kind of stealth sim game sort of kind of game. Uh, it's going for PC, Xbox Series, S, and X. No Game Pass. So probably, probably just, you know, you buy the game. Uh, and it looks great. Very excited for this. Maybe it's like a roguelite. Or maybe it's just a deck builder where you you build a deck. You stealth pull a card out and then use it to do something. I imagine that's what it is. It's, it's probably a press release. I won't be going into each game. Uh, maybe I'll highlight one, uh, but this is still early on. So we have much to look forward to. That's what it looks like to me. Uh, the altars. This is coming to the game pass, but there was no date. So the altars, this looks very interesting. This is like a fallout shelter, you know, kind of like the, what building sim life sim kind of game where you're building these structures but instead of it being people it's versions of one person all living together working towards a goal uh very cool it's a very i think in my opinion a unique idea so this one guy is like oh you know all these dimensions on this planet and he's trying to get home and he's living on this kind of looks like giant wheel thing. I don't know. I don't know what is happening with that. But uh, there's like a bunch of houses and the one altar is him. If he like stayed in college, one altar is him. If he was like a if if he worked it out with his wife and, and all these things and each come and have like negatives and positives and some of them don't like each other. And it's very fun. Very cool idea. I will definitely check this out whenever it comes out. Uh, it's kind of like this life sim game sort of. Creatures of Ava is up next. Day one on Game Pass and PC Game Pass later um, this year. <sighs> Creatures of Ava. I'm already blanking on this. I watched this two days ago. So let's... Creatures of Ava. Let's look up and remind myself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is like a... Almost like a slim, Slime Ranchers type of game. Sort of kind of, kind of thing. Uh, it looks like you're spending time with these animals and all these things you know minecraft-esque uh not much to add to this uh i'm not my type of game 
Roblox Griefville versus Chucky or Cross Chucky. This was available now on Roblox. Um, I, I would like it added that I learned things about Roblox that I did not consent to, and that was very annoying. Uh, I was like, well, I, you know, I, I was like, what is this? And then I saw the, f- the fucking Roblox guy. I was like, oh, this is Roblox. Jesus Christ. It's not a big Roblox guy. It's for the kiddos. Um, don't play it if you're over the age of 18. It should be illegal. <laughs> um, that is available now. The Sinking City 2. Uh, if you play the Sinking City 1, this is like the Cthulhu-esque Eldritch type of game. Kind of, I guess horror game is a good way of putting it. Uh, I don't have much to add. I didn't play the first one. Sinking City 2, if you're excited. If you liked one, maybe you like two. No, and what, not much stone, too. Kind of CGI trailer. Uh, Final Fantasy XIV Online, March 21st. Uh, the game will be launching fully, and if you're a Game Pass Ultimate sub, you will be getting the Starter Edition. Um, I can't figure out what is in the Starter Edition. So I think it's just a free month of the game. like like Because you do have to play a subscription to play Final Fantasy XIV. Uh, so I guess it's just a month, because I went to Square Enix store, and all it said was 30-day free trial. So I'm guessing that's what this is. Maybe there'll be more things added. But there you go. March 21st. Monster Jam Showdown. Very, very popular game with, like, you know, people who want to play around with monster trucks. There you go. Monster Jam Showdown sometime this year. Persona 3 Reload will have three um, waves of content inside of an expansion pass. The first wave will be on March 12th. This will be um, music that will be in the game from Persona 4 and Persona 5. You can have new background music. There will be giant packs that you can get. The second will be a costume pack. It will be a Velvet Room costume pack sometime in May. And then lastly, episode Aegis launches September. Of course, it looks like you will have to buy this expansion pass to get any of this, assumably. Maybe they'll let you buy it all of cart. But they were really trying to be like, please buy the expansion pass, give us money, and then you'll get this in September. It's like, eh, I think I'll just buy the pack. I don't think I need all of this other stuff. I just want the episode pack, which I believe is the answer. I'm assuming those two are the same things. Persona 3 fans, let me know. But it also said episode ages and then slash the answer. So I'm assuming this is that DLC. Surprised that we're not getting the female protagonist as DLC. Maybe that'll be later, but that's weird. That's like a big part of that game. So you would imagine you would want this to be the game, the Persona 3 game with all the content that people like and etc. But maybe not. Next up, the first Berserker Kazan. Not much here. CGI trailer. Cool. It looks like a Souls-ish game. But if it was anime, it looked a little stiff, stiff. But again, we're seeing it early. I'll, I'll wait for giving more opinions on it. Until the game is closer. Tell us of Gonzara Zhao, I believe, or Zhao, I think is how you pronounce it. April 23rd. This is being pumped, pimped by Xbox quite a bit. I see front page uh, listings for it a bunch. I see advertisements on, you know, this is the second time they appeared on the showcase, I believe. And uh, yeah, cool. It looks great. I'll be trying it out. It's a Prince of Persia esque game metrovania you know it's funny that this came out almost perfectly to coincide with the prince of Persia game that came out in january uh and it's also got some distance so it won't be directly compared to which is probably good for this game but we'll have to see uh the game is you know is respectively priced too it's not very expensive i think it was 40 bucks something like that so it's not a full price game so you, you get a little bit of discount a little bit of discount next up we have frost punk 2 july 25th pc game pass only it looks like what you would expect kind of these civ civ like game not too much to add here i'll be moving on uh because i i'm a civ guy I, I don't really like other civ games i just like kind of my civ game but next up hopefully i don't butcher this kunsu kunutsu gami path of the goddess game pass we had day one title sometime this year. This is the Capcom game that was showed at their showcase where the person like drives a sword into the ground and pushes it forward and then hands are coming up and all these things. Very artistic in its presentation. Lots of things going on on the screen. Seems very bombastic and very loud in terms of this color presentation. So we will see if they have, they probably have the presentation down. Let's see if they have the gameplay and the narrative and et cetera down when the game launches sometime this year. 
And that is the little kind of showcase they had. It, I liked it fine. I thought it was a good partner showcase. I find it weird to like try and judge these if I'm going to be honest here because it's like kind of like it says advertised. You're not expecting a lot when it says an Xbox partner showcase. At least I'm not. And it, it feels kind of like the state of plays where they're so random in terms of quality. Whereas this one, when I feel like I see a partner showcase, I'm like, oh, OK, I know what to expect. A couple third parties that I'll be like, oh, cool, and then move on. I would say this is actually lower um, than probably other ones that I can think of. But the, um, uh, I think it opened strong and then the games that showed it were like, eh, OK, cool, whatever. Um, and again, a lot of these games aren't coming out anytime soon, or if they are, some of these will probably be next year and et cetera, et cetera. But I thought it was fine. I think it was good, a good showcase. And, uh, I, you know, I don't think we, I, we have to dwell on this for much longer. I, I think it was fine. It doesn't really need to impact because it's called a partner showcase. So no, I don't think they need to deliver some fire announcements at this thing. Next up, I want to discuss Warner Brothers weird kind of thing here. So WB plans to double down on live services, despite obvious data to the contrary. Warner Brothers CEO and president of streaming and games, JB Perriette, says this, quote, within the studio segment, we're doubling down on games as an area where we think there is a lot more growth opportunity that we can tap in with the IP and we have some of the capabilities on the studio side where we're uniquely positioned as both a publisher and a developer of games. Rather than just launching a one and done console game, how do we develop a game around, for example, Hogwarts Legacy or Harry Potter that is a live service where people can live and work and build and play in the world in that world on an ongoing basis? end quote and he goes on to pretty much say like we think we could make a lot of money with a game kind of like this ongoing live service and it's funny because and then they've been kind of lambasted a bit here too i so i think we should give this guy benefit of the doubt and a few things before i kind of tear into him a little bit so let's discuss who he's talking to so he's talking to people at a morgan stanley event which I believe is like an investment firm. Let's find that out together, actually. I believe that's an investment firm. Um, so, like, they're not going to get in the nitty gritty. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, they're an investment financial advising firm. Uh, so, the, he's not going to get in the nitty gritty of their experience. You know, they're going to be talking very broadly. Like, ah, oh, how do we make the people lips in these things? So, I'm not going to sit here and pretend like this is gospel. Although, I do think we can sometimes gleam overall strategies from CEO discussions like these. I think this might be a good example of getting some of the information, but I don't know. I really can't imagine this guy really is sitting here thinking like, yeah, yeah, even though Suicide Squad fail, we're going to keep trying that. I feel like what he's saying here is we're going to try and workshop these ideas, but not in the elimination of one. Although he does say in the same piece that he literally brings up Hogwarts. Because he's like, it was good, but that's not what we're looking at. But he, he is saying that the market is also volatile in the aspect, of, even though it really does sound like he does not know what the fuck he's talking about. Because he's saying like it's volatile because Hogwarts Legacy did very well, but Suicide Squad didn't. It kind of tells me this guy doesn't really understand games. So hopefully he's not actually making any discussions and he's just being very broad with what he's understanding about these games. I'm not sure. But comparing those two um, together in a situation is kind of missing the entire point. But again, I don't think he was probably being in an degree about this. So we should maybe give him a little bit of the benefit of doubt of this guy because uh, it doesn't even sound like he kind of understands this maybe. And he kind of lets other people figure out the gaming side. That's not improbable with things like this. It's not like he is the president of Oh, well, he's the president of streaming games. <laughs> I was about to say he's not, but he definitely is. So I don't know. Maybe I am giving him too much benefit of the doubt. But, but let me kind of string him up for a little bit because I do find it very interesting that he has very strong data saying that these streaming services might not work. Uh, a lot of studios would kill for the data that they have. They probably have very interesting things uh, inside talking to like what happens when you have a studio like Rocksteady make this thing. And you can look at like data points and figure out what did well and what didn't on the, some of these things and what happened during this nine year span. And what can we you learn from it in the future, turning all these negatives into positives, because it's clear that that suicide squad is DOA. 
Um, it is very dead. It does not seem like it's got any concurrence. It does not seem like it's got legs. It does not seem like it's going to be selling well. This does not seem like a Gotham Knights situation where even though critically it didn't do well, it seemed like it sold relatively well, especially given like it did not review very well. It, it seemed to have sold well. It charted, I think, that year it came out, if I'm remembering right. Respectively, I think it was like top eight or something like that. I can't, I can't remember. Anyways, it sold very well, especially for a game that was canned. Pretty thoroughly, I would say. When you look at all these data points and you do still say this, you do kind of scratch your head and you have to think like, what is he specifically discussing here? Is is he being very transparent with what he's talking about? Saying like, no, I know what I'm talking about. I'm saying even though I have Hogwarts Legacy being the best sold game of the year, which is nothing to sniff at. Again, the last few times we've had like El you know Elden Ring and this being top sold game, being single player games of their years, it's very intriguing, and it's and it's, it's it's showing that these services games they they can't work because you have to kill one in order for another to arise almost because we're actually losing. Sp- base for these games we have so many ongoing games like how like if we really had to sit here and name them we'd probably be here for almost an hour just straight up just naming them all and i mean like you know each person has their kind of couple games and they've i think we've run out of those people so you either have to outright kill a game in direct competition with you so you know the famous destiny killer and all these things right you would have to do something of that nature outright go for the knees for for someone that you're against and steal their audience almost or adapt of strategy that is almost it, it, it's almost unforeseen right now and let me let me expound on that because that's probably sounds uh annoyingly nonsensical what i mean by that is you, you have to almost create a situation where we almost can't foresee i forget there's a a rule about this and kind of critical thinking um and what I'm what I'm saying is like you know we didn't think a Fortnite could happen until it kind of happened. So you would almost have to catch lightning in a bottle yet again, right? We're seeing that we saw that with Fortnite, Apex Legends, just kind of coming just literally out of nowhere, and then having these fans that just kind of stick with your game. Destiny Two kind of did that, but it kind of did a, a more of a mountain system versus like a kind of leveled system, more of a plateaued. Uh, it is it, they did almost like a yearly jump versus like a Fortnite where you probably have a engaged f- f- player base like going throughout and it probably has peaks and valleys but generally it's 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 on a plateaued um uh player base it's strange that that someone this high up is saying something of that nature it's very actually i would say confusing especially you would think he's making quite a bit of money He's probably very smart, so it's it seems like you're almost saying the opposite of what you would think you would gather from this data, which is saying, like, oh, we need to double down on unique titles, find the uniqueness in our uh, products, and then pitch them into something that goes along with that original idea in its uniqueness, right? I think a lot of success in games like this is finding something unique with an idea and then almost utilizing it in a almost utilizing it in a way that that most people can't foresee which becomes almost like a surprise at the end of the day right right so like for instance fortnite kind of exploded because we didn't we knew we liked it because PUBG was popping up we knew we liked battle royales but we didn't know what was the cornerstone of 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 how you could catapult something uh, into stardom like that and then they've kind of figured it out accidentally with making this for fun battle royale mode making it this kind of cartoony so it kind of appeals to kids uh making it where it's not too violent in these things and then you know just letting it explode and it's and i don't think at any point they thought oh i'm going to do this now i'm going to make a Fortnite, and it's going to be big and you know at no point anyone thought that so it you almost do yourself a disservice when you sit down and go like, we need a Fortnite go like it almost doesn't have to happen that way. Right. No one sat down and was like, we want to make the last of us before the last of us was made. Right. When they sat down, they probably were like, let's make a good thing. And then it just kind of happened. Right. 
it's hard. I guess I should say it's it's hard to make a hit, right? It's hard to manufacture a moment, right? Pokemon Go, I think, is a good example of this too. When Pokemon Go was being made, I don't think Niantic was sitting there like we've got a banger on our hands. They probably were pretty confident in the game, but they didn't think it would explode. Literally, like overnight. So, even it's almost let, let's <laughs> it's it's almost like a, a Schrodinger's cat situation, kind of where up even going in almost in the opposite direction, where saying one event is almost saying it won't happen right saying the cat is dead in the box almost guarantees that the cat won't be dead in the box it's like the opposite of of that whole idea uh but in gaming space right if we sit down and go like we need the Fortnite, go that that you're not really that's not really gonna happen i think you need to be more nebulous with with your thinking and, and sitting down and being like we need a live service i just think immediately sets you on the back foot because you're not letting a idea organically happen you're forcing it to happen and can we really point to that many things right george lucas didn't make star wars to make star wars he made star wars to make a cool thing that he loved not to make this giant monolith of entertainment that would one day be sold for billions of dollars i think i'm kind of talking in circles but i think i've gotten my point across i hope this sparks some interest in dialogue into you. Of course, I want to remind everyone, disagree. You know, I'm not, I, I, I hope I don't come across as someone that is set in my ideas. Please challenge me out there. I, I have people all the time. I love talking with people all the time. Someone, Dan, from Podcast PSN, someone famously that I disagree with um, a lot of times. I, I, I if, if you're at home and, and at any time you hear this conversation, you're just like, I, I don't agree with that, please. It, it, all avenues are available to you to get in contact with me. Let me know what you thought, and we can have a dialogue, either either uh, one-on-one or on the show. And uh, thank you again for listening to the show. This is, um, this is something that's very special to me. I love sitting down and discussing this when I have time. I do apologize. I did miss last week for personal reasons, but I love sitting down. This is a great outlet for me. I want this to be an outlet for you as well at home. Get in touch. We'll discuss our topics, what we've been playing, and you know anything you'd like. Uh, again, every comment on every video ha- ever has been answered on this channel. I'm very proud of that. So please utilize the tools that you have. A very quick date update this week. The PlayStation Plus Essential March lineup, F1 2023, Sifu, Hello Neighbor 2, and then a Destiny 2 witch queen expansion i gotta be honest here i'm a bit confused so i claimed all these claimed the destiny 2 witch queen expansion but then it says for me to buy it i'm assuming because it's an add-on i don't really feel like downloading destiny 2 just to try it i did not see anyone else having this problem so i'm assuming it worked i'm just gonna move on my life i'm never gonna play destiny on my playstation if i do if it's not gonna be on my xbox it's gonna be on my pc so i'm not really too worried about it i'm just gonna move on my life i'm fine with not you know even if it didn't work i'm like "Eh, who cares Anyways, that's all for date updates. Uh, we covered really most of the date updates, of course, with the par- partner showcase breakdown. Let's go on to what's queued up for the weekend. Of course, this is what I ask you at home. What is queued up for the week? Of course, it could be a game, a movie, a TV show, a manga, a comic book, a book, a movie, anything. What is queued up for the weekend? Now, I have, of course, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth to clean up. I think I'll have that finished before the next recording. I think I'll be finishing that up, playing a little bit more Helldivers because they just added the mechs in the game. That's very fun. Um, also, I, I just realized I, I, I'm, I'm perfectly cutting the show very close to I have to pick my wife up very soon. Um, it's about uh, it's cl- it's close to six and I got to go get her soon. So I'm very happy about that. Yeah, hang out with her. We'll probably watch something very. Um, I don't talk about this a lot, but very into wrestling. I, I, I noticed my shirt. I'm wearing I'm wearing my Judgment Day shirt. Love them on there. Wrestling. Very fun. I used to watch it as a kid all the time with my dad. Uh, loved watching it with him watching it now enjoying the time i love the new storylines i love the evolution that they've come into love the uh, but when i was watching it i was like 10 12 um 
divas were still a thing. If you don't know what divas were, it's when women wrestled, but they didn't really wrestle. They were they were just kind of the they, oh they're hot, and they would just show show them being hot to you pretty much, and then they would kind of cat fight for a little while, and then they would move on. Of course, you had different divas in quotes throughout WWE's history. Um, that did not square up with that idea, but anyways, I and what's funny enough is back then it, you know it wasn't very good, and now. Uh, the women's division, I think, is my favorite part of WWE. Like that is such that is so good, um, especially going into WrestleMania with what it looks like, um, uh, uh, Becky versus um, uh, Rhea Ripley, and uh, uh, like I'm always interested in what Bianca Belair is doing and all these. Like, there's so many figures that I'm like, oh, what what's gonna happen with them and, and all these things. Uh, I find myself way more interested in the women's division. Then the men's division half the time, and I'm happy because uh, when I was 10 or 12, you know, you really were just watching it because they were icon eye candy, and and looking back, and I'm like, ah, that I, that kind of sucks. It, they missed out on doing this earlier because they viewed them more as symbols than actual wrestlers, and I'm glad that's changed because I love the women's division right now. They're very, very, very good. Love their the attitudes, the the, the championships and all that can't wait can't wait for more can't wait for this wrestlemania be playing some more final fantasy 7 rebirth over the weekend i hope everyone there is having a good safe weekend saturday sunday of course uh very soon um i'm recording this on a friday usually it's thursdays for me this is a friday this time so enjoy enjoy your weekend enjoy uh your monday hope everyone's gonna have a good week we will be uh back normal schedule next week um, I'll be recording Thursdays, going late Friday. Thank you so much again for listening to the show. And until next time, go Chief.